Hi guys, welcome back to Rick's Car and Bike. And uh, before we get outside and I uh, show you how to replace um, the LEDs and check out the gauge cluster on your uh, on your car to see if uh, there's something wrong with it or see if you can uh, replace those LEDs, I just want to share a quick story with you about why I decided to start working on my own cars and fix them myself. Well. I think I shared an earlier video about my uh, my old Ford Pinto and uh, how I brought it home from the shop after my very first tune-up to find the air cleaner was not even sitting properly on top of the carburetor, uh, which was kind of a shock to me considering what I paid these guys and paid these professionals to do. Um, but another example was um, a number of years ago, my wife took our van into uh, a, a local shop and uh, they quoted her over a thousand bucks to fix it because of course the... Uh, idiot lights came on the dashboard and she panicked and took it in and uh, I you know she phoned me and I and I said look I said L bring it back bring it back I said so they charged her for you know diagnostic 125 bucks and uh, you know told her that this whole PVC needed to be replaced so I, I opened the hood took a look over through it and uh, I found that there was an elbow a little elbow part of the P PCV system uh, hose an elbow uh, at the back just kind of uh, behind the uh, the valve uh, cover area intake. And, you know, it just had a hole in it. That's all that happened. And it set the code, right? Because um, the, the the motor was probably running leaner than it should have because more air was getting into the system. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> simple matter. I just, I even had a bunch of uh, hose pieces in my garage. I just cut one and replaced it. So the cost for me was, was half an hour of my time and, and nothing, not a cent. But this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. And so, you know, you have to, in my mind, like these are the kind of things that to me are just so insulting to customers that, you know, you got to do this stuff yourself. Like don't get taken advantage of here. So, you know, these, this video series is all about how to do these, uh, some of these jobs yourself uh, through YouTube videos. Um, and that's what I've used. And then just figuring some things out on my own. So again, today we're going to look at how to replace the LED lights and have a look at the gauge cluster in my 2003 Volvo S60 2.4T. And uh, hopefully uh, you can, you know, if you're just out there having fun replacing some bulbs because you want to change the colors, that's awesome. But, uh, you know, um, you can also check to see if your gauge cluster needs to be repaired and there's ways to, to do that or places to send it to where you can get it done affordably. So you don't have to end up paying outrageous amounts of money to get that done or, or, you know, even worse, decide to scrap the car, you know, because these are great cars. They're really cool cars to own and drive. And, uh, you know, they're not expensive to buy. They're really great cars. So uh, anyway, uh, if anybody's out there and wants to save another one, I hope this will help you a little bit. So uh, uh, go catch you the next part of the video. OK, thanks for watching. Hey, guys, welcome back to Rick's Car and Bike. Rick here and I'm outside in my 2003 Volvo S60 2.4T and uh, in the last video I promised you we'd get uh, a camshaft and crankshaft seal video up for you to help you, uh, you know, give that repair a shot and see what you can do, save yourself some money um, and stop that car from uh, from leaving, uh, leaving trails of oil all over the road. So uh, what we're going to do today though, just as a quick video, just to help you um, sort out um, your gauge cluster. So another defect with these cars over time, the gauge cluster goes, it's the, the solder joints uh, on the board behind, you know, they just uh, stop being able to uh, flow the electricity where it needs to go. And of course you get all kinds of weird things happening. Gauge is not working, you know, uh, you'll get uh, various uh, codes coming up on your uh, DIM and uh, you'll get various messages. The airbag message will come up, service S, you know, all this kind of stuff. And basically, uh, what's happening is that your your uh, your DIM is just failing, and um, so of course you know follow the procedure, check out uh, different things because it might be something simple. Uh, the guy I bought the car from, he had a quote from uh, a Volvo dealer of thirteen hundred bucks to do this repair on the cluster. Um, no, don't don't do that. You're not gonna you don't, you don't want to waste that kind of money on this car. It's it's not worth it. Uh, you know. So what uh, what I did was of course I checked out a few videos on YouTube and watched how they do it. One option is to pull your cluster, send it off to uh, companies like Zemodex that will uh, rebuild it for you. There's a number of them. You can find them easily. I'm just doing a Google search, and uh, that'll cost you about 500 bucks. But what I decided to do was. 
actually, um, you know, disregard what the dealer said because I know their job is to gouge you for uh, for as much money as they can and uh, investigate it myself and see if I could figure out the problem. So that's what I did. And, um, you know, one of the key problems is that uh, you'll see gauge clusters that have their those bulbs out. So the first thing I did was remove the gauge cluster, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second, and then check the bulbs. And sure enough, I found one of the bulbs was out. Uh, fortunately, I had uh, a 20 pack of, uh, of bulbs, and I think I got it right here. Actually, I'm going to show you what I bought. I got this one here. I hope you can see that. I got this one off of uh, Amazon. It's uh, made by a company called Cute Queen. Uh, nice name. But it's uh, they're red, and uh, it's a T5 SMD 2721 and a pack of 20. I don't think I paid more than 10 bucks for it, including shipping. So what I did was I um, I bought it because I had a Trans Am a number of years ago, and I wanted to change the interior lighting away from uh, the lights it had and put some red LEDs in, which I thought looked really cool. So I, I enjoyed that. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'll take I'll take you through right now um, how to remove the plastic around the gauge cluster, and then uh, get you going. You can check out your lights if you have any of the light bulbs that are out, or even if you don't, if you just want to replace them with a different color LED, make it look cool, make it look the way you want, blue, yellow, red, whatever you like, mix and match, I don't know. But anyway, um, so I'm just going to show you this gauge cluster here. So here we go, here's the gauge cluster. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, I'll show, there's a plastic surround here. You can see this plastic piece that goes all the way around the thing. That has to come out. All you got to do is get yourself a screwdriver and just pry it. You know, uh, if you have something plastic you can use for this sometimes. Uh, but I just use a screwdriver. Take it easy. You know, this car is 16 years old. You know, the plastic is not going to be as, as, uh, as flexible as it was when the car was uh, new. But So just pry around the outside. And on this side, same thing. You can see here where you've got uh, this spot here. You can pry this all out. Then down here, above where your key is, you can see the seam that runs here, uh, the plastic here. And there's uh, some notches. Once you pry that up with a screwdriver, you'll see where it kind of sits in and joins these two together. And, uh, you know, just pay attention to where these plastic pieces are because once you pry it apart, you got to, of course, put them all back together, right? And there's another seam like this just on the other side. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see down here with this camera, but you'll see it, um, you know, down here. So pry that out, and then once you get that piece out, this whole piece, including this, this right here, will come out, you know, and then uh, in behind there, up in the corner here, there is one here, one down in here behind, and of course, one up here, one over there. There's four Torx uh, fasteners. So again, if you if you plan on keeping a car like this or working on it, get yourself uh, a Torx um, a Torx uh, kit so you can have different Torx sizes to do the various jobs. You're going to need them for the uh, the crankshaft stuff, uh, which I'll be explaining in my next video. So get a Torx set um, and um, you know learn, uh, get uh, get going on this one. It's easy. It took me something like, I don't know, I want to say less than 10 minutes to get this cluster out. Then, the, you know, once you've got the plastic off, this cluster comes out and you do not do not even have, don't unplug it. Do not unplug it from behind. If you unplug it, you're going to have problems because as you know, with a lot of these electronics, you know, sometimes the factory or somebody with a scan tool has to get in there and, and you know, um, reprogram it or whatever they have to do to make it work. So don't unplug it. Just check your light bulbs if, if you have a light bulb out pull the bulb it's just a simple way they come out really easy um, just unscrew it pull it out you know replace it with the LED uh, put it back in and see if that works I had one out this one down here for the odometer and trip meter was out so I replaced it with red and this one was still the the factory color but I wanted them to be the same so I replaced that one as well with red I'll just turn it on I'll show you what it looks like there you go. There you go. So you can see that for yourself. You know, I replaced them both with red. The others are all the stock colors. And there's that silly message I told you about uh, that keeps coming up. So again, all you got to do is press um, press the button on the end of your uh, your high beam stock, signal stock, and it's gone. So anyway, 
there we go. So I hope you guys can uh, can do this, uh, change the colors, do whatever you want to do, at least uh, be able to read your gauges. Um, again, if some of the needles are not working for your uh, your uh, uh, tachometer or your speedometer, you know that's more of a significant thing where it could be. In fact, your cluster needs to be repaired. So again, check on Google. There's a couple companies that will do this for reasonable prices. There's also the option of uh, of going to a wrecker and pulling a gauge cluster. Uh, like I said, these things are uh, you know it's a 15 minute job to get the thing out of there. Uh, that's another option. Just keep in mind that if you do that, you may have to go to a dealer anyway to get them to uh, to reprogram it to fit your car, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, the rebuild is obviously a great idea if you can go, you know, send it into one of the companies and get them to resolder or reflow all those uh, solder joints. Um, that's another option, but that is, you know, still going to cost you five hundred bucks. Okay. Hope this helps, uh, and uh, uh, we will catch you in the next video and I'll talk to you about uh, how I uh, how I made it through the the horror of uh, of camshaft and crankshaft seal replacement and I've got a thousand K now since I've uh, replaced the seals not a drop of oil coming to the car so yeah I'm really happy so I hope to help you out and uh, we'll catch you later don't forget like this video please subscribe and I'll do my best to keep uh, keep these going and uh, keep helping you out okay uh, have a good day. It's Rick's Car and Bike, and uh, take care. Um, bye for now.